G-protein-linked second messengers. The table of second messengers is probably one of the most intimidating charts in this entire book. But do not worry, we will incorporate this information as we move through the chapter. This is a better way to learn this crazy chart than trying to memorize it. So for now, what I want you to take from this chart is just a few high yield points. As we spoke about in our acetylcholine receptors lecture, many drugs work by mimicking or antagonizing different receptors in our body, either to enhance or inhibit cellular activity. Some receptors are coupled to GTP binding proteins that signal enzymes to activate second messengers within a cell. These G proteins come in three flavors. One, GS, which activates, or S for stimulates, the enzyme adenylocyclase. Two, GI, which inhibits adenylocyclase. And three, GQ, which activates the enzyme phospholipase C. Now, there are many different tricks to remember which receptors are coupled to which G proteins. The one I like best has three rules. Rule number one is that all beta receptors are GS. Rule number two is called the MAD2. So all M2, alpha2, and D2 receptors are GI. And rule number three is that all M3 receptors and most sub-1 receptors are GQ. Now, exceptions are beta-1, which according to rule number one, all betas are GS, and also D1, which I like to remember as my oddball for also being GS. So you see how we simplified this chart? If you can remember the signal cascade of the three G proteins and which receptors they are coupled to, well, then you've mastered half the farm battle.